Hi, my name's Vince from Mr. Telephone and today we're going to talk about how to install a master socket. This is an NTE5 master socket. NTE means network terminating equipment. You can buy all these products from my eBay shop. That's www.mrtelephone.co.uk. Okay, so the idea of this master socket is that it's a demarcation point between the service provider's equipment and your equipment. You own all your phones and your extensions in your property and the service provider, be that BT, TalkTalk, Talk, whoever you're with, they own the line up to the master socket, okay? And with this new socket, what you can do is, well it's not a new socket, it's been around about 20 years, what you can do is you undo the two screws, you slide out that front plate, all your extensions will be connected onto the front plate and then you have your test socket here. That's your test socket, just this point here. You plug your phone in there, if everything is okay, or you plug your broadband in there, whatever fault you're experiencing, if you plug it in there and the fault goes away, it means that you have a problem with your extensions or something plugged into your extensions, in which case then do not call out your service provider because you will get a big hefty charge. If when you plug your phone in there or your broadband and you're sure that your filter, your phone, your ADSL lead is all working correctly and it's you still have the same fault when you're plugged into the test socket It means the fault is with the service provider and you need to call them out because it's going to be a line fault Okay, so I'm just going to show you how to wire up this master socket So I'm just going to bring the phone down the uh, the, the, the camera down here the table Right, okay two different types of master socket that they use throughout the years This one here has two screw terminals, okay? I should say two different types of NTE master sockets because before that you had master sockets that were this size here, okay? But so let's talk about the NTE today. So the only difference is years ago they used these screw terminals because they used to have thicker drop wires from the telegraph pole and they wouldn't fit into the IDC terminals like you have on this one, okay? But nowadays all telephone wires are 0.5 millimeters in diameter. So this is a new type socket. It's been around for quite a few years now, but you can still get the screw terminal version, right? There's no difference, it's just screw terminal or IDC. All NTE master sockets have IDCs on the extensions down here. Okay, so we're just gonna talk about the, the latest one here at the moment, yeah? Okay, so what happens is the, uh, the line from, from the street, so from the pole, the, 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 the incoming wires from outside, the, the, the main incoming wires always terminate onto this IDC block here, okay, A and B, just two wires, and then all your internal wiring should be fed from this IDC block here. Now, IDC blocks will only take two wires in each slot. Don't put the third wire in. Sometimes it may make the connection, but what happens is it's a metal V and the wires get pushed into it. As the wire gets pushed in, the metal V cuts the plastic sheath on the outside of the wire to touch the copper in the inside. Now, one wire will go in okay, another wire will go in okay, but the third wire won't make a good connection because the metal V won't cut the third wire properly. Also, some people say, can you use stranded cable in, uh, in IDCs? Again, sometimes you can get away with it, but what often happens is the stranded cable is a lot softer than the solid core cable, and when it gets pushed in, it just crushes the cable rather than cutting the cable to touch the copper on the inside. So again, you can end up with a noisy line or it can just sometimes not make the connection at all. So these are designed for solid core wires. Now, as you can see, the latest master sockets only have terminals two, three and five. I don't know if you can see that, two, three and five. The older ones have either four or six terminals. This one here is all the terminals, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. Some just have two, three, four and five. It doesn't make a difference because you only actually use two, three and five. So they've probably saved a, uh, a couple of pence and they've uh, now they just put in two, three and five. So a lot of people get worried and they think, mine's got four terminals, this one's only got three, will it work? Yes, it will, because the wires connected to four, five and six, you don't need. So just coil them up and leave them loose in the back of the socket. These are the only ones. You only need the two and the five to make the phone work and you need three to make it ring. A lot of phones now, in fact, most phones will ring on two and five. So a lot of people don't even bother connecting the third, the, the ringer wire. But uh, these newer sockets now have a bell wire filter included. That's this thing here, okay? And if I just open up the socket to show you, you see what it looks like. That's it there, it's a the little choke. 
Now, bell wire filter, you can Google, you can Google all about it. It basically, it's better for your broadband because it stops interference. It, uh, the, the bell wire can act as an aerial and it can pick up a lot of radio waves which can affect the, the two and five, the wires and two and five, yeah? So now they put this little choke in to uh, stop, the, uh, stop the interference. Not all master sockets have that. If you have a look at my, let's just pop this back together. If you have a look at this one here, the screw terminal version, this one doesn't have it. Okay, so there's no, no bell wire filter on that one. So when you're buying them, make sure, especially if you're using it for broadband, it's probably best to get the bell wire filter. Yeah, it's not gonna do any harm, and it can only, it can only benefit, benefit the line. But not all master sockets have them, so double check that. Okay, so, I sell them with and without a back box. This particular one is coming with a back box, okay? But double check that. If it's to be flush mounted, so if it's going straight on the wall, if the back box is hidden, a uh, metal back box, electrician's back box in the wall, then you don't need the back, you don't need the, the back box. You will just plug this straight onto the wall and it will be flush mounted like that, okay? But if you're just doing a surface mounted job on the skirting board or just above the square skirting board, then that's, uh, that's what it will look like. It's got the back box with it. So just make sure if you're ordering it, if you need a back box, get one with a back box. Now, so we're going to do a quick wire up now. So pretend this is the external cable. This is drop wire cable. It's quite hard to work with. But this is the, the main cable that companies like BT, BT would use. So we'll strip back a little bit of drop wire cable. It's, it's hard to work with this drop wire cable. Now you see, you have three support wires, they're not used, they're just to, to provide uh, support for the cable when it's spanning across, spanning across the road, spanning across your garden, whatever, it just gives it support to stop it sagging. Okay, so let's just cut them back. Now these are, these are your wires here, these are the pairs. Orange and white is a pair. Remember, telephone cable is only very lightly twisted around each other. If you stripped it all the way back to here, you would find you would see the twists. But we've only done a small bit, so that's why you can't really see the twists. Okay, but this is one pair, the green and the black, and this is the other pair, the orange and the white. Now, the first line will always go down the orange and on the white. If you have a second line installed, which a lot of people did years ago with the dial-up modem, then they would be using the, the green and black for the second line. Nowadays, you'll probably find that it would just be the orange and the white. Okay, so we need to make a knockout in the back box. Depends where you're coming in. If you're drilling it through the wall, and this is your wall here, then it's probably best to knock out this, uh, this one here. because then the cable can go straight through the back box and when it terminates onto the sockets then you're not gonna you're not gonna see any wires okay because it just goes straight through the wall if you're bringing it in from somewhere else then you've got numerous knock knockouts on the back box this is the one at the bottom so you've got one here one here one here and one on the top as well so they just knock out like that so for this one now just to make it easy I'm just gonna bring it in the bottom so you push it through like that Okay, in the pack you get numerous screws, the two little screws are for the face plate and then you have two machine screws and two self-tapping screws. The self-tapping screws are used for this particular back box, the machine screws would be used if you were to flush mount it onto an electrical back box. So we won't need right, these right now because we're just using the plastic back box. So let's undo the extension, face plate. And this is, this is the back plate here. So what you need to do is, you need to cable tie the cable onto these bits here. You get the cable ties in with the socket as well. Put that through there. Terminate that up. Tighten that up there. Cut that. Companies like BT do actually use this black whistle thing that goes over this because the uh, these tension things can be very sharp. You can cut your fingers quite easily on these little tension these little tension things. They're not used. They're just purely to give the, the wire strength, but they can be really sharp. Okay, so we're not using the green and the black. So we'll twist them, and they can always be used for a second line in the future if you ever decide to go that way. Now it doesn't actually matter which way what, why, where you get the wires around, it's, uh, it's not polarity conscious so it'll work either way around. Now to punch these wires in here, 
Don't use a screwdriver, don't use a credit card or anything like that. Get yourself a proper tool. These cost about a pound-ish from, uh, from eBay. I think I've got them for about a pound, pound fifty, something like that. Okay, now, they do work absolutely fine. The only problem is they don't cut the wire. They just push the wire in. So let me just show you. So if we push that wire in there, the orange one, you can see it gets pushed in, but it leaves the overhang of the orange here. Well, when you use the proper tool, this is like a, a Chinese version of the expensive crone tool. Okay, yeah. So when you punch it in using this, there you go. I don't know if you've seen that, but the scissor action actually cuts the white bit off as well. Yeah, so when you push it in, the, see that. Yeah, so you don't need to, you don't need to cut the wires off. But it's not a problem if you do use one of these, because these are a lot cheaper. After you push the wire in, just get yourself some little snips and just snip the wire. Yeah, the bit that you don't need. Because the metal V is contained in here, so you don't need the bit there. So that's how you, you terminate that bit there. Like that. Okay. <coughs> yes, me. Now, so that's the line. That's the line coming in. Now, if you want to do an extension, get some extension cable. Again, if it was flush mounted, it would be just rested here on this bit here. But this isn't flush mounted, this is surface mounted. So I'm going to pass the cable up through the same hole again, because imagine that this is going to be cable clipped along the skirting board or, or stapled to the skirting board. So let me get my cutters to strip a bit of this back. Now again, you have the drawstring drawstring there and this way if we pull the drawstring we know we haven't damaged the cables so go back on the drawstring like that pull the cable through cut off the excess sheath and the drawstring and also the cable that may be damaged because if you can see here you can see that there's bits that are uh, little bits that are cut where I cut the cable initially yeah see that or not so if I was to cut that there then I know this cable here is intact because if you have a little nick here it might work fine now but give that a month or a week a year it will go that will be the weak spot and that's where it will go okay so this is just two two pair cables so we've got four cores we've got the the blue pair and the orange pair okay now to make it work we just need the blue pair but i am going to connect up the bell wire the the orange ringer wire because we've got the bell wire filter so it's not going to affect anything and this way we will know that no matter what phone the customer plugs in it will always work because the old phones will not ring without the bell wire filter so i think it's always best to connect it if you've got the the bell wire and especially now in the future with everybody getting their bt infinity then the uh, VDSL plate fits into the master socket and you, you, you use your extensions again so you get rid of all your micro filters in which case you're going to need the bell wire again to make the, all the phones work. So just be, just be wary of that one. So what we do is we cable tie it to this little bit here. Cable tie it onto that bit there. Now always cable, tie the, always cable tie the sheath, never cable tie the actual wires themselves. So always cable tie the sheath. And again cut off the excess off the, the tail of the, the cable tie. Now that way it's cable tied on the sheath and it's not the wire so it's not going to damage anything. Bring the wires up through this little bit here. Okay, and we terminate. Now these colours will be all over Google if you search it, but basically you start here with the white blue. So the white blue will go to number five. Punch that in. The orange white will go to number three. That's the ringer wire, let me just show you that so far. Okay. Now the white orange is not needed, we've got no space to put it, so just move it out of the way okay and the blue wire that's the solid blue wire will go to number two like that so remember that's not connected now 
If you've got a three pair cable, then the greens are not gonna be connected either. If you've got a four pair cable, then the greens, browns, and the white orange is not gonna be connected. They are the only ones we need there. So white, blue to five, orange to three, and blue to two. That's it, that's all you need. So we then pop, so we get the screws, self tappers, put them in here. Yeah. If you can, always leave a little bit of slack in the socket because there's nothing worse than when you come to change something over in the future and there's no slack and you're having to piece out the wires. So always leave a little bit of slack. You plug that in there and then you've got two screws to do up these little two screws here. And now hopefully you can see that the black wire is the wire from outside and it is terminated to the back box. And then you've got this white wire which will be terminated to your extension wiring. And that way you can disconnect your wiring from the net service provider's wiring. So it's a nice easy, easy way of saving yourself a, a call out charge. Okay, that goes in there like that. Do up the two screws. And that is it, job done. So now you know if you ever have a fault in your line, the first thing you do is you come to the master socket, undo the two screws, slide out the front plate, plug your phone into the test socket. If the line is no longer noisy, if it's no longer dead, you know you've got a fault inside. Do not call out your service provider. Call out a local engineer or have a go at fixing it yourself. Now just to show you the other end of the extension, just for you, those of you that are interested in how to connect the other side up, in case you're run, running the new extension, because they're exactly the same size. It's not rocket science. You strip it back, get your drawstring, uh, just like that. And you use exactly the same color codes to exactly the same terminations. So remember, cut away all the, the wire that I've damaged by cutting it back. And now we have nice cable here, stripped by, by the drawstring, so there's no chance of damage. And then again, you do start on white, blue to five. You can see again, can you see it's labeled there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so the same terminations in there. Remember, we're not using one, four, or six. So we're just using two and five to make it work and three for the, the bell wire. So punch those. In fact, I'm gonna use this tool here, the cheap tool to show you. So that goes in, just push it in like that. It's not as nice, it doesn't make the click, but it still works, and if you've just got a one-off job, there's no point in spending seven, eight quid on one of them. You can get cheap ones on eBay, much cheaper for a couple of quid. They really don't work well, I'd rather use this. Okay. Now, which way round it goes? If you just do it very carefully, you can see it won't push in that way. Don't force it, just do it gently, it won't push in that way, but if you go this way, it will push in. So if you have a look, this bit here, that's the bit for the cable. So only push it in the way it goes. So the cable's on the inside. And again, if you look at the IDC connections, you might see that there's a little shoulder on here. Yeah, so the shoulder is where you cut the wire. Obviously this doesn't cut the wire, but it just pushes in like that. Again, if you have a look on this one here, can you see the blades? Oh, it's hard to do without. There, hopefully, hopefully you see that. So the blade, the blade comes down and cuts, yeah, as it forces down. But you don't need that because you can just use this tool and then cut it afterwards. So that's blue to two, white blue to five, orange to three, remembering to cut off the excess if you're using the cheap tool. Because what can happen is if you leave it too long, the wires, if they can, if they're stripped back a little bit, they can touch each other and cause cause the line to short out. So the line can be engaged when it's not really engaged. Now, what I always do is on this one here, I always connect up the spare wires just because to make it nice and neat. Obviously, on the master socket, you couldn't do it because there was no spare terminals. But that's it there, like so. And then to make it nice and neat, you can just get yourself a little cable tie. Again, most of the sockets come with a cable tie. 
cable tie it up, cut off the tail, and there you have it, that's your extension socket, that's all it is. So now you've got your master socket, and then this white cable will go to whatever room you want it to go, the kitchen, the bedroom, back room, whatever room where your computer is, and uh, that's how you do an extension off a master socket, and that's how you wire up a master socket. So it's, uh, it's really nice and straightforward. Remember, the wires coming into the house, it doesn't matter which way round they go. So uh, you can go, you know, white, white to A, orange to B, or if you're using, if you're using the, these colours, again, just use the, use the blue pair for the incoming line. It all depends. It's not up to you what, what, what wire you use, because the wire comes in from the service provider. So have a look at what they're using at the moment, and then you'll know. But it's always stick to the pair. So on here, the pair will be the blues, and the other pair will be the oranges. A pair is basically the wires twisted around each other as it goes along, and it stops interference and overhearing from other lines. So always stick with the pair, otherwise you'll get a problem. If, for example, you use the white blue with the white orange, you're going to get a problem because this is the orange pair, this is the blue pair, and you've used one wire from the blue and one wire from the orange, so it's not going to it's not going to work properly. It might be okay over a very short distance, but just do it right to begin with, and then you're not going to get any problems with interference coming onto the line. Uh, yeah, so so that's it. So the wires doesn't the wires on the mask socket doesn't matter which way around they go on the back plate. When it comes to the front plate and your extensions, you have to get the wires the right way around. Otherwise, you're going to get problems. Okay, so blue to two, white blue to five, orange to orange to to, to number three. Right. Okay. So that's uh, that's this video about how to do NTE five master sockets. I will be doing loads of videos in the coming weeks about all different uh, BT66s and loads of others. There's already a few on YouTube, so please have a look. Uh, again, if you need to buy any of these products, that's the, the website there, and that will link through to my eBay shop. These are all in stock, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you very much. Bye now.